بلاش نسجلش وبطل على الكارد دي انجليكتور. Okay, good evening, everybody. Today we have a lecture about a grammar for higher studies candidates. Uh, the, the speaker is Assistant Professor Huda Abdul Ali Hattab from University of Baghdad College of Education, Abroached for Humanities, the head of TOEFL Center. Let us start with the basic things of grammar. Um, now we will talk about something very important in writing, whether I can say or any other piece of writing. For punctuation marks are very important. What is meant by them? It simply it means they are simply used to cut the writing for clarifying and completing the meaning of text. Without punctuation marks, the text will not be understood. They are of different types. The main types of punctuation marks are ending and non-ending. Within the ending, we have the three types, which are full stop, it is the most used one, just like, for example, when we are writing, I am learning English now. It can't be regarded as a sentence unless we will end it with what? A full stop. Then we have the question mark, which is used with the direct question and even with the uh, when we have a doubt concerning a certain piece of information. So when we say, when did she arrive? Here we are missing something regarding the girl. So we want the F person to supply us with. And the exclamation mark, we have it uh, when we have a sudden and strong feelings to express something abnormal. To say just like, what a brave man he is. Okay, so this is something not uh, normally uh, here, and this is a specific situation. The other type is uh, non-ending punctuation marks in which we have the signs of the punctuation marks which appear where within the clauses and within the phrases, it means not at the end of sentences, but in the middle, like comma for separation and enumeration numbers, dates, and the writing. So uh, sometimes I am I'm saying that uh, punctuation marks are very important. Nobody can really deny them. Otherwise, for example, if I am using a sentence like, uh, I'm hungry, mom, I, I'm hungry, I want to eat, mom, without having a punctuation comma. So here, the, the listener will, will feel that I, as I, I want to eat my mom. If I'm saying, I'm hungry, comma, mom, it means bring me something to eat. Okay, so in this case, for funny, we will say that the comma could save the life of my mom. The colon, it's used before quotation and emphasis. And then we have the dash or hyphen, which are written in, in the same manner, but they are used differently. Okay, and then we have different types of brackets and parentheses, whether they are separate or rounded, and they are used for extra information. Then we have the apostrophe, which is related to quotation marks even. And sometimes when we want to elect, uh, to use for the ellipses, three dots to indicate that there is something missing and we could add for it. We cannot uh, neglect capitalization when writing because we cannot expect um, that we could have a paragraph with having all the letters are written in what? In a small letters. There should be capital letters from time to time. So just like the titles uh, of people like doctor, professor, and books, and articles, days of the week, years, uh, months, countries, Baghdad and Paris and Jordan, and any other country or province or city. The other part of the lecture for today is tenses. And here we have different types. And among each type, we have what further and minor types of tenses. Let us start with the present simple, which is indicated with the addition of S. For example, we say he, she, it, eats the food. And if the subject is a plural or I, the verb will be what? Pair verb, like David, but without any addition. Present continuous, here we have this picture in which we have a subject 
And within the verb form, we will have what? Is or are plus verb with I ing. Of course, the selection of is or are depends on the type of subject that's used. And with I, don't forget to use what am. So we can say I'm learning English now. Past simple is indicated with the addition of ed for the verb. So we will say I played guitar yesterday. So this means we are talking about something in the past, not in the moment of speaking. Another version of past tense, it's called past continuous here, in which we have something that is continuous for a long time. For example, when we are saying while we were waiting for the teacher, my friend made an accident. So the other situation is cutting the longer one. So the matter of waiting is long and the coming or, or the accident, when it happened, it's abruptly unrequited. With the present perfect, we have what? The subject plus has or have a plus past participle. Here, the past participle is very important. Otherwise, it could um, be said to be a perfect tense. Sometimes we could gather all the tenses together in order to say that sometimes we have occasions in which we will have perfect plus continuous. So the total uh, output will be what? Present perfect continuous, just like when I say, I have been waiting in the airport to travel to the bank. Okay, so here uh, we have two uh, and a longer, in fact, a longer case. Past perfect is talking about something that happened in the past, but it's what? Completely done. So when you say, I have completed the job, this is that there's nothing left. So it's perfect. Past perfect continuous, here we will talk about perfect and continuity. So we will indicate that it's perfect and so. so we need to talk about future tense going to to mention something that we are planning to do. Awesome. Sometimes we have what present continuous for making what an arrangement. If you are arranging for a meeting or for a lecture, etc. The weakest one, let us say, is well, we make a decision or offer or promise, and it could be done or not. Okay. Sometimes we are using comparison. And for example, in order to show these things, for example, I'm saying she's going to see the week. So this means that she's planning to see the doctor. And we say, I'm seeing the doctor tomorrow after. And this means that I'm arranging myself for that situation. Okay? When I'm saying the phone is ringing, so it means I will reply. But when I say, I will help you solve them. So this means I'm offering the help for you different things because of the limited time of our lecture so we'll not go through the details sometimes we need to talk about passive voice which is over to active voice sometimes we do not need to mention this subject in the in the sentence so we'll omit it and bring the object from the beginning of the sentence and, and to choose where to be that suitable and then change the main verb into our part so, of course just that When um, taking into consideration all these four points, so the any sentence alive could be changed into passive voice, even if it is not known in its meaning. This diagram and table will show in specific with the first column the types of tenses, and, and then if we have the active form, how could uh, to change it into, in for example, with the present simple, if we are saying here, there's the card. So if we open he, the sentence will be the car is repaired. And when choosing past simple, for example, he repaired the car, so the car was repaired. So never neglect the type of verbs to be that is suitable to the tense which is used. Okay? Let us try one with the future simple. If we have a sentence like, he will repair the car in the future, tomorrow, or next time. So, with omission of he, the sentence will be what? The car, which is the object of the original sentence, and then bring well, because it indicates the futurity, and then be, because we agreed from the beginning that there should be a suitable verb to be in the sentence, and then at the end, we will shift the main verb 
to the form of past participle. Thank you for your listening and wish you all the best. Goodbye.